I don't think you could find a better, more apt, a more appropriate speaker for this occasion than Ed Fuller. I think maybe some of the highlights of his background might be useful. He actually graduated from Boston University in 1968, I believe, actually a part of ROTC, and then became a captain in the Army and served both in Germany and in Vietnam where he was awarded the Bronze Star. Came back, began to work for Marriott. 1970, 1991, I believe, he became senior vice president in charge of Marriott Lodging International. I'm not sure I have all the numbers right, but I believe at that time there were 16 international hotels in Marriott. Today, there are 350 in 68 different countries. And there are plans to add 120 more. Uh, that, it seems to me, indicates that somebody who's doing an enormous amount of work and is extraordinarily productive in his work, and a person who knows an enormous, an enormous amount about what's happening in the hospitality industry. Uh, despite the amount of energy that you would think that that would require, he has never lost in any way his interest in serving Boston University. He has served on the Board of Trustees. He's presently on the Board of Overseers. He was the president of the Alumni Association. He's been awarded the Alumni Award, which is probably the most prestigious award the university would give to an alumni. He is presently the director or the president or the head of the School of Hospitality Advisory Board. He's done an enormous, I mean an, an absolutely, an enormous amount of work for this university. And, and, and I just want to make sure one thing is clear. When you read off a listing of all those little titles, I sometimes think that they have the, the way of sounding like honorary, like you don't have to do a lot, but you can just get these nice titles. Uh, these are not honorary. This requires an enormous, an enormous amount of work and dedication on his part to do it. I, I'll say, I, I don't think you could find in any school of hospitality administration right now throughout the country where there is a graduation going on I don't think you will find a person who knows more about the state of the industry and where it's going than Ed Fuller. So I think you're very fortunate to have him here this morning. So I'm going to turn it over to Ed. That was a very kind and warm introduction. You know, today is very special for a lot of people, but the graduation is all about the graduates, right? It's all about you, and I hope you've established that with everybody because today is all about you. But we're going to talk about tomorrow, and so there's a lot ahead of us. And while you have a lot to celebrate, I want to take a few seconds to recognize two other folks, and then I'll come back to you. Number one, I want to recognize uh, Dean Stamos. Um, Dean Stamos' last year is this year, so I know this is bittersweet that he could not join us for your graduation. Uh, for us, it is also bittersweet. He was the first full dean of this school when it became an independent school and has really been the leadership that has created Shaw into what it is today. That modern facility that you have enjoyed did not exist before, as you know, because the class was here when it came about. And it is his contribution, his effort, his leadership, working with this dynamic team that I share the stage with that has made this program what it is today. And I heard Bob Brown, the president of the university, describe Jim as the comprehensive dean because he became involved in the total role. He was involved with the students, involved with the academics, and involved with the industry. And that is a rare, rare combination. So I'd just like you to take two seconds. He's not with us, but I'd like to know that he can hear us, and let's give him a round of applause. The second group I want to recognize is your parents. They're breathing a sigh of relief back there. So when that piece of parchment ha is handed to you, they're all going, ah, they're graduating. We've done our job. 
But the fact of the matter is, I want to reassure them, as I want to reassure the graduates, that the future ahead is bright. In reality, I'm glad I'm not doing this last year, when the economy was having its stumbles and its tumbles and its fall. Uh, the fact is that while our industry fell with it, the industry is seeing positive signs. We're not talking about shoots of grass. We're actually seeing increases in occupancy. And on a global basis, we're seeing significant growth in markets such as Asia and the like. The future of this industry is getting even brighter, and it will in the long term. We will always have recessions. Your parents know that. They've lived through them. You will see many in your careers. But the fact of the matter is that we will have ups and downs, and we will continue to grow. Our industry is going to grow like no other. Today, the hospitality tourism industry represents over 9% of the world's GDP and employs over 320 million, I'm sorry, 230 million uh, people worldwide. In 2020, that number will be over 320 million and in fact will represent more than 10% of the GDP. A lot of things are happening out there. New markets are growing, new sources of travelers are traveling, new demands for the industry are growing every day. And a lot of it comes from the leisure business, but also in the general business areas too. Airl airlines are going through huge consolidation problems, but in reality, they are still expanding their growth to serve new markets. And these new markets represent jobs, opportunities in related, as well as the hospitality hotel business, restaurant business, tourism business, event business, and all those areas. That's the good news. The market is changing, and it is growing in a really great way for the future. So these graduates sitting in front of you, should they choose to stay in hospitality, have tremendous potential for a lifelong career. If they choose not to stay in hospitality, the skills they've learned can serve them well in other related fields because the disciplines they've gotten from their time at school has given them skills that coming to Boston University can really make a difference in their growth in whatever field they choose. Your parents made a great decision in helping you come to Boston University. It has served many, many people well. We have over 300,000 graduates today around the world from Boston University who celebrate in many, many ways the fact that they got their degree at this institution. And those are your friends and future relationships. And I will touch on relationships in a few minutes. But I would like to say about the industry as a whole, the dynamics of the hospitality industry are changing. This is a business, and for those of you that were with me when I came by BU a couple of months ago to talk, I stress that this is a business. The business is changed because it's transformed into many, many aspects of revenue management, all of which you've learned, uh, many, many aspects of IR and technology are changing how we do business. It is a business that continues to prosper, but looks for innovation, which you have also discussed with your professors. You've been very lucky with the staff here at Shaw. Very, very lucky, because they've given you insights, both practical as well as academic. They've given you insights and visitors from the industry who've shared with you the ideas. Now, I didn't retain much of every class I attended as I look back on my 1960 classes, and I remembered only a few key points. But there are key professors I always remembered, and some of the salient points that were made by them that kind of stuck with me and helped me through problems and challenges 
as I went through my day's work. This time will go down in your book as special, as fun, but it should go down as a time that has paid dividends for you as you grow. I could sit here as uh, many of uh, our guests do and try to share with you uh, great advice. I'm not sure you'll remember it all. I doubt I did. In fact, I'm still trying to remember who was the commencement speaker when I graduated. But the fact is, I do want to share some thoughts with you. You have all developed some great relationships here. I'm not going to have you look to the left and right. Uh, you know who you've developed those relationships with. Relationships in the world today are still very important. It's how you get work done sometimes. It's how you become more effective in getting work done. So those 300,000 alumni, those fraternity brothers or frater uh, sorority sisters, those classmates that you've worked with can be not only your friends, but can be your partners and helpers as you go through life in your business. And you will see them again as you transition through your life. I had dinner last night with the fraternity brother that I graduated from. Bob and I have been close for years. He has been a great help in my business in getting Hancock rooms into Marriott hotels. So uh, he has helped me in that way too. But the fact is that relationships are significant. Do not take people for granted. If I can leave one or two messages, that is one of the most significant I can. Do not ever take people for granted. Realize that they may be there to help you as you grow in your future and help you as you continue to expand your knowledge and the opportunities that you have. So those folks that are sitting with you today could be the person that helps you in the future. Also, do not take for granted the fact that the world is changing. America has lost some of the emphasis it has put on relationships. And as we become a more global world, and I believe we are going to become a more global world, and we've gotten a few doses of experience with that in the last couple of years, the fact is the rest of the world relies on relationships. And America needs to learn again about relationships and how it's significant and important they are. One of the other areas I wanted to touch on is the fact that I mentioned before, you're going into business. Business can be fun. It has challenges. But the fact of the matter is, you need to look at your first and next job as being in the business world and it has new rules for you. I strongly recommend the first thing you do is make sure you communicate with the people you work with. This is not a Blackberry, this is discussion. Listen to them, talk to them, understand what you're doing. Do not be afraid to ask questions. You will be successful if you have good communications with the people you work with. But more importantly, instead of worrying about what your future job will be, focus on the job you're in. Focus on what you're doing right. And focus on getting the job done. Too many people leave school worrying about when they're going to become general manager of a hotel. Worrying about when they'll own their own restaurant. Worrying about all the things that come later and they don't focus on the job they're in. You have the skills. You've spent the time getting the work done here. You've shown accomplishments to those you work with as well as those people that have been teaching you. The fact is you've got the ability. Show that ability in getting the job done rather than working on all the future things you'd like to do. They will come because of your results. So I promised you only a couple of ideas. 
because if I loaded you up with everything I thought, you'd never remember any of them. I would only suggest again that you have your life ahead of you. You've got a great opportunity. You made a tremendous choice coming to the School of Hospitality and Boston University. And you've had a great team sitting up here on the dais with me who have worked diligently to give you the resources. So my last piece of advice, use them. Be successful, enjoy it, it's great out there, and if we can ever help you, well, Marriott Hotel always needs good people. <laughs> and to the parents and to you, we always need good customers. So, <laughs> so if you haven't got your Marriott Rewards points or planned your next vacation, we'll be looking forward to seeing you at the next Marriott facility. Thank you very much and good luck.